if one person might rightfully be designated as the father of the American off-road vehicle, it would have to be Vic Hickey. By the time he reached Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo for Navy pre-flight training in 1943, the Ohio-born Hickey had grown up in Southern California and learned his mechanical skills by building dry lake hot rods during high school. At age 16, he soloed an airplane and by 19 earned his pilot's license. During his Navy years, Hickey devised a mechanism to launch aerial torpedoes from a PT boat. However, Vic Hickey was best known for his design of the first off-road vehicle. His modified Jeep with dual-wheel adapters saved the lives of many U.S. troops in Korea, as well as providing many hours of enjoyment to off-road enthusiasts back home. Hickey also developed the original Humvee, a vehicle still used by military organizations around the world. When Tom Spaulding first moved to Arroyo Grande in 1973, most of his pioneering hot rod days were behind him. But although he had sold Spaulding Ignitions to the Eklund Corporation, Tom's long history of automotive innovation didn't end with his official retirement. He went on to build a battery-powered truck and fabricated much of the specialized hardware for the very first in-car television cameras for racing coverage. At the age of 10, Tom learned to drive the family's 1923 Chevy in the orange groves of Azusa, California. And within a few years, Tom and his older brother Bill were disassembling and rebuilding the engine and swapping parts from other cars, and soon began hopping up a 1929 Ford engine. In high school, the brothers built a 1935 Ford V8 with milled heads and homemade twin carburetor manifold and exhaust system. Many advances in ocean diving equipment can be traced to a marine snail, a single-shell mollusk of the class Gastropoda, genus Haliotis. For centuries, the abalone was an important food source for generations of coastal dwellers. In the mid-1800s, Native American tribes yielded the harvest to Chinese immigrants, and by the turn of the century, legal restrictions were imposed to prevent the mollusk's depletion. Next, with the invention of the diving suit, Japanese settlers moved the fishery into deeper waters. Their prominence effectively ended with the beginning of World War II. During the war, the waters of Southern California were reopened to provide the armed forces with the high protein content offered by abalone. Commercial divers from the Central Coast had also moved south to harvest the marine algae gelidium, and with the end of the war, most of them returned to the Central Coast fishery and were joined by a new breed of young divers. Barney and Clancy and Al Hansen had met at San Francisco's Kaiser Shipyard. By late 1945, they were partners in a commercial abalone business in San Simeon Cove. On Monday, June 21st, 2004, at 6.45 a.m., the tandem White Knight and Spaceship One aircraft designed by Bert Rutan took off from Mojave Airport in eastern Kern County, California. Over the next hour, the quirky pair of craft climbed to about 50,000 feet, and then the White Knight dropped its payload. Spaceship One, piloted by 63-year-old Mike Melville, then rose into space under the power of its hybrid rocket motor and put its mark in the history books. As a small kid in the Central Valley in the 1950s, Bert Rutan was never at a loss for activities. He was preoccupied with building model airplanes. Not the prefabricated commercial kits, but models of his own design and choice of materials. He wasn't the only one in his family interested in planes. His brother and sister went into aviation too. Bert said, I don't remember thinking much about a career in high school, but I also found out that I liked physics and the teacher who taught it, so it became clear that I wanted to become an aeronautical designer. I think my dad did some checking around and found out that Cal Poly was a good school. I remember the day my mom took me to visit there. It was the day Alan Shepard made his flight, and I listened to it on the radio driving over to Cal Poly. You remember that kind of stuff, where you are when something big happens.